The idea of writing an opera for Aix-en-Provence was suggested to my collaborator, Martin Crimp, and me the day after the premiere of our first work together, a small theatrical piece called Into the Little Hill. That was premiered in Paris. And the next day, I was sent a very beautiful letter by the director of the Aix-en-Provence festival, Bernard Focroul. In this letter, he said, George, I've been waiting 20 years for you to write an opera for me. Now is the time. Please will you do a large work for me in the festival of Aix-en-Provence. Martin and I, we discussed briefly and we decided very quickly to accept. We went to visit Bernard Focroul in Aix-en-Provence, in the famous festival which happens in July every year. We were enchanted by the place, and I, I remember that Bernard Focroul only asked us one thing. He said to us, please make the opera here, in the land of Aix-en-Provence. Now that was a very small thing to us, but a very important thing. And so we started to search for stories. And one of Martin's daughters was studying medieval European literature in Cambridge at the time. And she asked her professor, can you give me some stories from medieval Provence that might be good for an opera? And amongst the stories he gave her was a story called Le Coeur Mangé, mm -hmm. The Eaten Heart. Only six pages, a short story from the 14th century, early 14th century. Martin and I were immediately charmed by this powerful, strange, violent and dramatic, passionate story. And we decided quickly that would be the work, the subject of our work. As for, you asked the theme of the opera, in a way, I cannot reply to you, because there isn't one simple theme. But there is a story, and the story tells of a very powerful landowner, early 14th century, who has a wife who is young, sad, neglected, not loved, and she doesn't even know how to read, she has had no, no education, but she is curious, and she becomes very curious when the landowner, who we call the protector, invites a very, very talented young artist to come and live in his castle to create a fabulous illuminated manuscript which should, sh should glorify all the achievements of the protector and show him and his family in paradise. Agnes, the wife, is fascinated by this person, who we call the boy. And quite quickly, they fall in love. The protector becomes suspicious, more and more suspicious, paranoid, and eventually very jealous. And one day, he invites the boy into the woods and kills him. He then takes out his heart has it cooked in the kitchens of the castle and forces Agnes, who doesn't know what she's eating, to eat it. When eventually he tells her, this is your lover's heart, she waits and then responds with great courage to say, this is the most delicious thing I have ever tasted. Nothing you can do will ever take the taste of that heart out of my mouth. Those original words from the original story, it's extraordinary that that was written 800 years ago. In fury, the protector runs at her with a knife to try to kill her, but taking her life in her own hands, she throws herself from the balcony of the, ca of the castle and dies. So it's, there are some themes, some which are ingredients of many operas. There is the presence of passionate love, there's the threat of death, but the story of eating a heart, that's not very common in opera. There is also the idea of emancipation of a woman who discovers herself through love and then finds incredible courage and power within her. 
There is, I hope, the charm and magic of the medieval ages, but the story is told in a strange and unusual way. I believe, personally, that for opera today, narrative is very important, but you can't treat storytelling as simply as was the case in the 19th century. We live in the era of television, internet, and, the, and cinema. So um, Martin's text has the singers narrate the story as they are also telling it, as they are also in embodying it. So the singers will refer to themselves and describe sometimes the room or the landscape and then enter into more normal drama. The, our hope was that this slightly distancing effect would acknowledge the ritual aspect and strange aspect of opera today. And once that is acknowledged, the audience can then forget it and perhaps feel more natural again within the opera house and perhaps res respond paradoxically with more spontane spontane spontaneity and, a, and more direct emotion to the piece than if we tried to be naturalistic and simply set our opera in the contemporary world like a film. Sorry, in the medieval world, as would be the case in a film today. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm extremely happy that my opera will be heard in Japan. I'm very proud that it will be heard at Suntory Hall. I know that it's a very important concert hall, not only in Tokyo, but in Japan and in the world. So I am very delighted. I am also very delighted that it will be conducted by Kazushi Ono, who I've known for many years, and I know him to be a marvelous conductor, an extremely experienced and powerful conductor of opera. I love the clarity with which he conducts, but also he puts passion into his music making. And also, in brackets, incidentally, he's also an extremely nice person. So I feel absolutely confident and very happy that he will be responsible for the one and only Japanese premiere of my piece. Now, I love to see operas in theatres with productions. That's where it is intended for. But I also really like, occasionally, to see operas performed in concert halls. Um, and I think this particular work doesn't work so badly for the concert hall at all. Indeed, it, I think it might work well. Firstly, the cast is only small, five singers. The orchestra isn't enormous. The length is about 90 minutes, which is like the duration of a concert. My orchestration and the type of harmony that I've used allows the singers to have space around them and doesn't there's really almost no danger, uh, if the voices are good, that the orchestra can swamp the voices and make them inaudible, even if there's no pit and they're outside in a concert hall. Plus, the story really is quite simple. And um, the self-narration, which is involved in the text for the opera, actually works really rather well in a concert hall and can, in fact, make the story really clear for the listener. Um, I've conducted the work myself maybe 10, 12 times in concerts, often with the wonderful Mahler Chamber Orchestra, for whom I wrote this piece. I know on this occasion it will be the Metropolitan Symphony Orchestra of Tokyo, and I have heard that they are a very, very fine orchestra. Um, I've seen a model of what is intended in Tokyo, and actually this is more developed than the concert performances that I've done and that I've seen, and I suspect this is quite near a new production of the opera, um, which is really interesting. Uh, I so wish I could come to Tokyo to see it, but unfortunately I'm conducting in the Lucerne Festival myself that same week, so it's absolutely impossible. I'm very sad about that. As for what I expect, there's one thing I would like to say. There's one challenge for any producer of this opera, and for doing it in concert halls as well. There are five characters, the protector and his wife, Agnes. And then there are some other characters, most importantly, the boy, 
who is the painter, the illuminator. And then there's some other smaller characters. There is the um, there is Agnes' sister, Marie, and Marie's husband, John. Now those three last characters also play magical 21st century angels who actually, at the beginning of the opera, announce that they are bringing this old story and its characters back to life from 800 years of being dead. And they return to being angels, the characters, from time to time during the drama in order to comment on the action and on the people, sometimes like a Greek chorus from ancient tragic theatre. Also, the boy is killed in the third act, but he comes back to life as an angel at the end to finish the opera. The one challenge, I think, the main one, for any producer in the stage or in an opera house or in the concert hall is to just make clear when those three other characters, when they are angels and when they are human beings, so that the audience can understand when they are magical people and when they are, as it were, normal people participating in the, in the drama. I'm well aware that Suntory Hall has this festival in the summer for contemporary music. I think that's a wonderful thing. I know it also has a very special history. I think my pieces have been included in the festival more than once over the years. But I'm particularly happy that my opera will be in this year's festival. It's so important to keep music alive. And that means not only performing the great works of the 20th century and the great works of previous centuries. It means also performing music from our own day. I remember with emotion my friend Toru Takemitsu, one of the greatest artistic figures from Japan in the last century. A wonderful man, beautiful person, was responsible also for the first performances of my works in Japan. And I remember the fantastic fantastic efforts he made to exchange music from all over the world and bring it to Tokyo, to Japan, so that Japan could hear the latest works of Messiaen or Boulez or Xenakis or Dutia or so many composers he helped. He was a man of real vision but also of extraordinary um, generosity. The contemporary music scene here in Europe continues to evolve. There are many, many young composers. We have fantastic contemporary music ensembles. And fortunately, we continue to have also wonderful orchestras and some very great opera houses, including the one that I'm talking to you, the town I'm talking to you from, Lyon, where my latest opera will receive its French premiere tomorrow night. I cannot give you a quick answer about the situation regarding contemporary music here in Europe or indeed in the world, but I do know that there are wonderful composers writing beautiful music at the moment, and I do hope that the contact with the extraordinarily developed and uh, um, refined Japanese world of classical music, that I hope that that contact and sharing also can continue long into the future.